Hello, this is Dan Wiener, Chairman and Co-Founder of Advisor Investments with another of our Advisor You Can Talk To podcasts. Today, as my guest, I've got Jen Zebniak, who's a member of our research team who works closely with our fixed income manager, Chris Keith, and helps build portfolios of individual bonds for investors with particularly large allocations to bonds or those who have special needs. Jen, I, I wanted to speak with you specifically about a particular subset of the bond market that you and Chris have focused on for many of our clients. Uh, you call them odd lot bonds. Can you tell me a bit about what these are and why you're interested in them? Sure, yeah. So odd lot bonds are just smaller size positions, such as maybe ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar increments. Um, they're more effective in an individual investor's portfolio than an institutional size fund. Um, institutional size funds would normally buy bigger positions, like in the millions. So the the positions you're buying though are of of bond issues that are quite small. Is that right? I mean, when you say ten or fifteen million, that's the total size of the issue itself. So that would be the size of a deal itself, um, but you can buy a smaller position size. Increments go down to for taxable bonds. Usually, you can buy an increments of five thousand. Um, sometimes it can be as low as one or two thousand, depending upon the issue. Right. So you might buy five thousand dollars worth of a five or six million dollar or ten million dollar deal. Yes. And correct. the pension funds, the mutual funds, have no interest in these. The smaller positions, no, they wouldn't have much interest. If you have a fund that's a billion dollars and you buy a $15,000 piece, it's not going to move the needle much. Um, whereas if you have an individual investor with a portfolio of, say, half a million dollars and you buy a $15,000 piece, it's going to move the needle much more and mean much more to that individual person. Now, a, a pension fund could buy the entire uh, issue, couldn't they? They could yeah, buy they a could. five or or $10 million position and own the whole thing. Why wouldn't yep. they do that? Um, so they could. Um, a pension fund would if they had the money and it's something that they were interested in. But sometimes they can sell off pieces of it or if a, a new issue, second market, you will find these smaller positions. It all just depends. And, and what's the appeal then for an individual investor in buying an odd lot bond? The appeal would be that they can oftentimes get more yield, um, and that's obviously more beneficial to the investor. It's more, more income for them in their pocket. Uh huh. So the the appeal of these to the small investor is that you've got more yield, and that the issuer is is providing that yield because the big fish don't want to bite. So it's not that the big fish don't want to bite. It's that. In order for these large institutions to sell these smaller size odd lot bonds, they offer more yield so that smaller, like investors that need smaller pieces in order to be meaningful to them will want to pick them up and the big institutions can get them off of their books quicker. Um, if they are sitting on their books for much longer and the market moves, they could end up losing money. So sometimes it's just so that they can move them quicker. Are we talking primarily then uh, corporate bonds or are we talking about uh, muni bonds? It could be both. You can find odd lot bonds in corporates and munis. Mm -hmm. and, and are these buy and hold until maturity type bonds for the individual investor or is it the kind of bond that you and Chris trade around? So for our clients, we don't tend to trade around. When we invest in a bond, we tend to hold, the intent is to hold some maturity. There are times when we would sell, and the two times I can think of are if we invest in an investment grade bond and then the credit quality deteriorates quickly, we will review the position and sell if we feel it's necessary. Or if a client requests money and we don't have cash on hand, then we'll sell a bond as well. Okay, well that's a need-driven uh, selling, isn't it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, since we're talking about selling, um, trading bonds is, it's not like trading stocks, right? We, you can't just, uh, look up a price on, on your personal computer or, uh, you know, <laughs> pop it up on your iPhone so, and see what's, what the price of a bond is. 
No, not really. I mean, a lot of it is relationship making. We do have an electronic platform that we can use. That's more of the science of it. But the art part would be the relationships that we form with these dealers. And it just makes it easier to be able to negotiate with them. If we see they have a bond at a certain yield, we're able to call them up and say, hey, we see a similar piece, um, just a little bit cheaper. Like, what can you do for me? And sometimes they'll come back and give us a better price. And it helps us add value. And and the the uh, the flip side, of course, is if it's a cheaper price, it typically is a little higher yield, right? Yes. I mean, this yep, is the, the this is the inverse of price and yield that I think a lot of individual individual investors don't always pick up on. Yes. And and um, it's my understanding that when you're working with the dealers uh, who actually have these bonds in their possession, everything is fungible. Right. There is no set price. And that's why it's hard to just see it on the screen of your phone. Say. Yeah. So, I mean, we look at a lot of different things, too, in order to make sure we are getting a fair price and dealing with someone directly versus just an electronic platform helps us to make sure we are getting the best. So how price do you possible. how do you do that? You have multiple dealers that you're playing off of one another or yeah I would say we have upwards of 30 different dealers that we do have relationships with some we use more than others but it does depend on who can offer us the best price in buying individual bonds um, what's the difference between that and say an investor going out and buying a bond mutual fund or a bond ETF I would say one of the biggest differences is when an investor owns an individual bond that has a set maturity date, and at that maturity date, they get their principal back. Whereas with a bond fund or an ETF, the investor themselves, if they want that money back, they have to go in and sell the shares in order to get their money. And with an individual bond, it happens automatically. And you are selling at the market. You don't know what the price is until the day you go Correct. and sell it. Yes. And you know what you're getting back with an individual bond. Great. Great. What is the What are the risks then? of owning an individual bond versus, say, a bond fund? Um, well, the risk of default, um, which is why we focus on buying investment grade bonds. We buy anything rated A or higher at the time we invest. Right, whereas a fund typically has a very broad base portfolio, even a, even a yep. default or two or seven in a, in a big diversified portfolio is probably not going to move the needle much for the individual Correct. investor. Yep. All right. Well, I want to thank you, Jen, for joining me today. This is Dan Weiner. I'm the uh, chairman and co-founder of Advisor Investments. And I've been speaking with Jen Zebniak, who's a member of our research team and works on building b portfolios of individual bonds for our clients. Thanks, Dan.